You want a better sound? You gotta do long tones, man. All right, but like, how do I actually practice them? Just do long tones. Oh, okay. Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. To me, tone is the most important thing when listening to someone play and specifically listening to a saxophonist play. You can play all the coolest licks in the world, play faster than everybody else, have great technique, but if you don't have a great sound and you don't play in tune, nobody's really gonna wanna listen to you. Just like you saw in the example at the beginning of this video with our friend uh, having trouble with his sound here and uh, that other guy trying to help him out, just saying do long tones doesn't really help anybody. Why am I making this video? Well, I've heard so many people say, yeah, I'm working on long tones, or I've heard people say, just work on long tones. And that's kind of the end of the conversation. They say, hold the long tone for really long and then take a breath and then try to do it again. Well, I'm all about focused practicing and not wasting time. And I think there's a way to really utilize long tones in a way that can actually help you get a better sound with tone quality and intonation specifically on the saxophone. Now you might not know this, but I'm not the biggest fan of long tones and usually it's because people just say do long tones. And I've talked about some other ways of practicing to get a good sound using melodies. And I actually did a video on that a bunch of years ago. I will link that in the description down below for you to check out. In this video though, I am gonna talk about how to actually utilize long tones and use that in your practicing to get a better sound, play more in tune and just have a more enjoyable overall tone to listen to. Right before I get into that though, if you haven't yet checked out my free masterclass called The Best Way to Create Melodic Solos, what are you doing? It's completely free. It teaches you how to voice lead through chord changes and not just play vertically, and also not just play a bunch of licks, so you can actually make beautiful lyrical solos over any set of chord changes. It's a video masterclass that comes with 10 pages of PDFs for you that correspond with it as well. And the best part, it's completely free. All you need to do is go to the link at the top of the description down below. It's also in the pinned comment, or you can just go directly to davepollock.com slash free masterclass. It's helped out so many people so far. I've gotten a ton of messages from people saying how much it's already changed their playing and they've wasted so much time before that, which really sucks to hear, but at least now they're able to increase their playing. They're having a lot more fun. They're playing better solos and they're really on that path to improvement with their melodic playing because of this masterclass. Go check it out today. Before I get into the exercises that I'm gonna show you about how to actually use long tones in your practicing, I have to give a shout out to my saxophone success community members. This is an incredible community of saxophonists that I am so lucky to have. And each and every month we get together and we do live Q and A's. I give them new masterclasses, songs of the month. We have great conversations and they're getting so much better at the saxophone being in this community. Why am I shouting them out specifically right now? Well, this month, January, 2024, I did a masterclass that they wanted. It's all about tuning and tone. I go into detail about one of the exercises I'm gonna show you today, but I go much further than that and talk about how to use these different exercises when you're playing, use it in context, and really get a better sound on the saxophone. In that community, I'm able to go super deep with those topics, and it's an amazing community, like I said before. And be on the lookout because uh, sometime later next month, I will be opening the doors to that community again, so be on the lookout for those announcements. So the first thing, when we talk about doing long tones on the saxophone, is I want you to just have a nice relaxed embouchure to start. I always talk about using the awe embouchure and I think that's the best way to actually open up your sound. People say, open up your sound, do long tones, do this, do that. I think literally just voicing awe when you play as opposed to like E or OO, that's gonna give you the best sound. So the first thing I'm gonna say is try to get a nice open sound on a middle note. So on saxophone, that's gonna be from like middle G to the G with the octave key. I'm gonna pick F with the octave key, I really like that note on alto. So I'm gonna play that note with just a nice awe sound. I'm not even worried about the tuner right now, which you will need in a second, but I'm just gonna play with a nice awe open sound. Hear that sound versus this sound with like an E embouchure. The all embouchure is gonna be much more open. It's gonna be a richer sound. It's gonna be a little darker and it's gonna be a little louder too because you're letting the reed vibrate and you're really getting the air moving through the saxophone. So before you do anything else, make sure you have a nice open all 
embouchure. That is step one. Now we're actually gonna get into the long tone and using it to make our sound better. The thing is, so many people either focus on intonation or tone quality. And I think those two things go hand in hand. So no matter what you do, whenever you play, always have that awe embouchure. If you always focus on that open sound and then add intonation to it, that's how you get a great sound. So many people think you have to do all these different things and hear this and do this and work on overtones. And sure, some of those might be great, but for me, and I, I think tone to me is the most important thing. It's what I think I'm strongest at compared to anything else on the saxophone. I'm focused on two things, open embouchure and playing in tune. If you can actually do those things, you're gonna have a good sound on the saxophone. So many people either try to have that open sound and they play out of tune, or they try to play in tune, but they're adjusting so much here that it's constricting the sound or whatever, so they're getting a bad in tune sound. So what you need to really focus on is those two factors, intonation and then open embouchure. So first, we're gonna play that middle note again, I'm gonna play F, and I'm gonna keep that same open embouchure and I'm gonna focus on keeping it open and keeping the pitch consistent. I'm gonna look at the tuner. If it's sharp, if it's flat, I'll adjust later. Right now, I'm just gonna play a consistent open sound at a medium volume and keep the volume the same. Okay, here we go. Okay, I was keeping it right roughly in tune. It was a hair flat, but that's okay. But it was consistent, and that's gonna be a really important thing. If it's way sharp, way flat, check some of the other notes in the middle range. Also, a little tip is don't tune on maybe middle D or open C sharp on saxophone. Middle D is notoriously sharp. Open C sharp is notoriously flat. Pick one of the other notes. That's why I picked F with the octave key. So if you have to adjust the mouthpiece a little bit to make sure everything's in tune and everything's nice and relaxed and you don't have to adjust, you're just playing with that nice all embouchure, which is step two. Now we're gonna move on to step three. Now we're going to change that dynamic level. There's a specific reason I'll talk about in a minute why. We're not gonna change it during the note just yet, but what we're gonna do is instead of just playing a medium volume, we're gonna play very soft, we're gonna stop, then we're gonna play very loud. Now, whenever you do this, you're still focusing on the main two objectives, open embouchure and staying in tune with the tuner, okay? This is very, very important to what we're gonna get into next. So here we go, a very soft long tone. Okay, now very loud. When you do this, I want you to pay very close attention to the tuner. Did the note start sharp or flat and then get in tune? Did it start in tune, then go out of tune? You have to know what your own tendencies are. And that's the biggest thing about using a tuner is finding out what your tendencies are with your setup. It's also why I'm a big believer in being consistent with your setup, not using too wild of a setup, like a very closed setup, you know, a uh, thin reed and, you know, small mouthpiece or big wide open setup with a hard reed and a size 12 mouthpiece or something. Just stay middle of the road and then you get used to it and not change your gear every day might be a good tip too. But you have to know, notice your tendencies. I noticed that when I played softer, I think I opened up a little too much and it went a little flat, so I had to adjust. Maybe I'm thinking to oh, like letting the air fall out as opposed to keeping the air moving fast, but just a small volume. When it was louder, I noticed that instantly it went sharp. Your mileage may vary. A lot of people, if they don't have a built up embouchure, when they try to play loud, they open up and they go wah, and the pitch goes down. I, I guess, tightened up a little too much. I was a little sharp. So I saw that and I adjusted. Now we're on to step four, which is going to be, how do we adjust? And I don't mean adjust here, we're done with this. We're not touching this anymore. Knowing your tendencies on, we're still talking about one note, at different volumes, using a long tone over a longer time, seeing where the pitch is, as long as it's consistent, we need to adjust the pitch a little bit to keep it in tune over the course of the long tone. How do we adjust? Do we think about each muscle here in our chin, and our side, and in our teeth? No. All we're thinking of is our embouchure and our overall voicing here. How do you do that? Well, repeat after me. E aw. Okay? E aw. E aw. Think about what your tongue does. Yes, other things are moving and your throat is opening and 
don't worry about any of that. You don't have to. I don't think about that. Why do you? You don't need to. Think e aw. Your tongue is kind of raising and lowering. e aw, e aw. Micro adjustments with your tongue are going to help put the note in tune or out of tune. If you need to adjust more than that and really bite down or really open up, there might be an issue with your instrument or with your setup or your embouchure isn't quite built up enough because you just haven't played long enough yet. And just the more you play, the more comfortable your mouth is gonna get with the instrument. But all I'm doing to adjust when I was a little flat with that softer note is I just raise the tongue up slightly. Instead of haw, I went maybe haw, raise it up just a little bit and you'll notice. I'm gonna do that right now. I'm gonna stay my regular embouchure, then I'm gonna let it drop my all, then I'm gonna go back to E, then back to regular and listen what happens with the pitch. You notice, obviously, I think it was very obvious to hear that I went way flat, then way sharp. Did you also notice something else about the tone quality when the pitch was changing? It wasn't just the pitch. It wasn't just, hey, I had a good sound and it was good and flat and good and sharp. No, when it was flatter, it was kind of unsupported and it sounded like it was, wasn't stable. And then when it was sharp, it was that really shrill, compressed, thin, quieter sound that you hear so many people play because they go <gasps> and they play like that. So this is why always think in embouchure and then tuning, combining those two together, you're always gonna have a good sound. If you learn nothing else from this video, know that if you play in tune while still having a nice open all embouchure, you will have a good sound. Now for the next step, once you've played different dynamic levels on different notes, now we're gonna change the dynamic level during the note. If you've already gone through the process of saying, okay, when I'm loud, my tendency is this, when I'm soft, my tendency is this, when I'm medium, it's this. You should know if you start soft and get loud, you're gonna have to do something. For me, I know I'm gonna have to open up a little bit and go more aw with my tongue because I know when I play louder, the pitch goes a little sharp. When I go from loud to soft, I know I'm gonna have to maybe bring the tongue up a little bit because my tendency is to go flat. I don't know what your tendency is. It could be different and probably is different than mine. So use the tuner to make sure the note stays in tune. What you don't wanna do is overcorrect. You don't wanna go aw and then it goes out of whack. Micro adjustments, very small adjustments. You shouldn't have to really bite down hard or really open up. Like I said, there might be an issue with your setup at that point. Remember, we're still on a middle note. There's gonna be you know, differences when you play a high palm key F or a low B flat. I'm not gonna get into those in this video here on YouTube. That's a little too deep into it. And uh, once again, another reason why my saxophone success community is so amazing because I get into all those deep topics with the community there. Here we go, now I'm gonna start soft and get loud while keeping an eye on the tuner. Okay, I was conscious of it ahead of time, so I was able to keep it right in tune without it going sharp first and then coming back in tune because I was ready for it. I knew that my tendency was to go sharp, so I was ready. Now I'm gonna do the opposite. I'm gonna start loud and then get soft. All right, that one stayed a little sharper the whole time because I kind of attacked it a little too much, but hey, it happens. And this is where practice comes in. This is where you can actually use long tones to help out your sound. It's not just holding a note for a long time and you're magically gonna get better. It's while you're holding the note for a while, what is happening? And are you changing dynamic levels? And are you changing notes? Which is gonna be the final thing that I talk about in this video. How do you play in tune for different notes? Well, this process that I just went into of playing long tones, different dynamic levels, changing dynamic levels, you should really be doing that and have done that on every note on the instrument especially in the middle range. Maybe not every note all the way down to low B flat or up to the altissimo, but all those notes in the middle range so you can know what your tendencies are and then adjust from there. The thing is you don't have to do this every time you practice. Once you figure out what your tendencies are for different notes, then you can kind of, if you wanna write it down, you know that, oh, my middle B is always flat. My higher F sharp is always sharp, whatever. You know that you have a baseline in the middle and then you can adjust from there and you don't have to go back every time. This is also why I say it's great to not change gear. I've been playing this saxophone, this Mark VI, since 2001. It is currently 
2024. So I've been playing this for 23 years. It plays wildly out of tune and wildly inconsistent, but I've been playing it for so long, I know where each of the notes are. I don't need to use a tuner to hear and move my embouchure and adjust for every single note because I know that. You might not know that yet, and you might not be combining that with the all open embouchure, so your tone might not be where you want it to be. Get consistent with your instrument, get consistent with this practicing, and you will get there, and then it'll be just second nature after a while, but you will have to think about it in the beginning. So what's the best way that I think you should practice playing different notes? Well, I'm not gonna get into the context of playing melodies in this video, once again, uh, I went deep in that in that masterclass with Saxophone Success Community, but start on that middle note, whatever you chose. So I chose middle F. What you're gonna do is start on that note, make sure it's in tune, make sure you have a nice quality of sound, then go a half step below, then back up to it, then stop. Then start on it, go a half step above, come back down. Once you can do that, then you're gonna increase that interval out from that middle note until you can go, you know, from middle F all the way down to low B flat or up an octave or whatever. That's how you get those extremes of the instrument in tune. And the hardest part about playing in tune to me is when you move, especially in intervals very quickly. Because if you have to go from that middle F to even an octave below it, if you have to do it quick and your embouchure doesn't adjust slightly with that E or A, you might be still playing with the middle F embouchure and the low F requires something different, so you might be out of tune. And then you get that sound. The best way to practice it is, like I said, start on that middle note, gradually go away from it, and once you start seeing certain intervals are harder, usually the bigger the interval is, the harder it is to move that quick, that's where you're gonna work on, moving from F down to C or down to A or whatever note is giving you trouble. So I'm gonna demonstrate a couple of those right now. One thing I noticed, and once again, this is figuring out your own tendencies, when I went from F down to E, that E was actually sharper than the F was. So it didn't even go down fully for a half step. It could be just the individual note on the instrument, or it could be every time I go down, I'm not maybe opening up and going E all enough, I might have to move it slightly more. The way to check that, which one it is, is just play that note by itself. So I'll just play E by itself. Okay, that E just started really sharp, so I know you know, that middle E on this instrument is pretty sharp. So now I make a note. Oh, it's not just when I go from F down to E, it's any note to E. And really the way to check it is then go up to it. So maybe I'll go from like C up to E, just for a check for right now. Yep, that E was sharp again. So then I know that specific note I'm gonna work on. Play long tones, different dynamic levels, listen, Keep that open embouchure, look at the tuner, and adjust as necessary. Once you do half steps, like I said, you do whole steps, then minor thirds, major thirds, so on and so forth, until you're going further away, and then you can speed up. You can, instead of holding it out for a long tune, you could do them kind of quicker to see if you can adjust up to speed, because once again, when you're playing music, you're not just gonna be holding long notes, you're gonna be moving around through different phrases and different rhythms. There is so much more I can get into when I talk about intonation, I talk about tone quality, and specifically how to increase your tone quality and get better, more consistent intonation on the saxophone. Although I know this video will help you out and give you a better tone, better intonation, and help you actually utilize long tones in your practicing, there is so much more that we can get into here, and I've only scratched the surface in this video when it comes to getting a better sound on the saxophone. I don't wanna just throw all that information at you in just a YouTube video here, especially if you have no context with me before this, but remember, in my saxophone success community, we do dive deep into that, and we talk about it live with one another in the master classes and in the community. Once again, stay tuned for more information about that when the doors are opening next month. Thanks so much for watching this video. I know it's gonna help you in your search for a wonderful sound on the saxophone. If you have any questions about this process or you just wanna know anything else about playing in tune or playing with a great tone, please put it in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. Don't forget to grab your copy of my free masterclass, The Best Way to Create Melodic Solos, by using the link at the top of the description down below and in the pinned comment. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.